introductory videos, basically getting our toes in the pool, so to speak, with Android Studios. And this is mostly left off just from the last video, the state we were in. I have my Hello uh, World very fabulous application running over here. Uh, it's a default, so I'm, I'm joking there. Um, and you can see there's a red square up in the corner. That's my stop button. I'm going to go ahead and stop that app. And if I want to hide that phone, I can just use this right here. Uh, I can probably um, toggle this. Yeah, I can toggle that, get rid of that window that way. It's still there. Um, there's a lot that's over on here that I'm not used to, but I'm used to the device manager. Uh, I'm not even sure if I'm used to running devices. I'm not used to Device Explorer. Uh, I'm not used to notifications. So in the past, there was very little over here. And you can play with um, having it removed or putting stuff in. It's kind of like a taskbar for your uh, device down here. All right, so tour of Android Studios. First up, when this thing launched, it was here and it was, I think, here. So you got to see this window. And I clicked off of it to show you what I wanted to show you. But we need to know what's going on here, and we can make use of this many times throughout the class, too. All right, so for my um, view, my screen, they are in XML files. I'll show you where we can go find those in a second. But one thing that's kind of cool about it that I switch back and forth between in class or even when I'm programming, code, split, and design in the upper right-hand corner. So design is going to show you a preview and a blueprint. Um, they kind of look identical to me. Uh, the preview is actually showing the text where the blueprint isn't. But the blueprint does have some things in it that we don't see right now that, um, that the preview screen doesn't have, um, such as it shows invisible stuff better, like padding. Okay, And we don't have any padding, so nothing's going on there. Um, if I want to show myself or the class some sort of result of us putting our code in here, um, then I can put it in split screen so it can appear visually just as it appears in code. So in order to do that, I was in design and I go to split, but I'm on a laptop here. Um, I don't necessarily have to do this when I'm in my office. I want to hide this menu over here. Uh, let's briefly talk about this menu before we hide it. It has a couple of things in it. Uh, the one we use far more often is project, but we also use the resource manager. Okay, so if I want to get rid of it completely, I'm in the project, I can click on the project. Uh, I can click on it again, toggle back forth, on off like a light switch to see uh, this. It's very minimalized right now. Uh, project resources, it doesn't have too much to begin with, but you can see that this says it's drawable, and this is my graphic for my launcher. Um, if you remember when this started, it was this little uh, robot inside of that green field, so you can tell you know, what resources it's using and for what, or you could guess it right now. Um, other things, colors, layouts, min maps, uh, mip maps, strings, uh, navigation, animation, animator, uh, we hit most of these throughout the class. Uh, this is one thing I talked about that this is one chapter I've never gotten to, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate, but just about everything else there we touch on throughout the class. All right, so let's get rid of this entirely so I can talk about this some more. Um, so both the views are there. The blueprint is down below, and I'm just using my mouse scroller. I could scroll this way, uh, but I like to see it like this. Um, and if that's like, oh, way too big, um, I know Hello World's there, I could just go Control minus, um, I was in the wrong screen there, Control minus, and uh, I'll go bring that back with a Control plus. All right, so I can just use my, my Control plus, Control minus, I'm on a Windows machine, or I could just use these buttons right here to enlarge and reduce or reset. Okay, so. If I change something over here, it's reflected over there and vice versa. Um, I tend to code more than I do like create, okay? So let's call this create. Like if I'm an artist, I can drag and drop things in and as I do, code appears. 
whenever you get into like the, the flow of that, it feels nice. You can get stuff done faster. Um, but then you come over here to the code, and now you now you got to think in a different way, perhaps. Um, oftentimes, this is good for you know to drag and drop and create a visual is good for getting a general idea, and then you realize oh things aren't exactly like I like it, and I'm not really sure how I can use just the drawing to get things that way I want, and you like make changes over here. Maybe you're the other way. Okay, but usually I'm more of a program thinker than I am an artist thinker, uh, and it's not like that's like 100 percent, right? Like um, I do art, so you know my free time that you know my hobbies are art and computer science. So I'm actually both, but when I'm teaching class, to me it's all about the code because that's where a lot of the emphasis is. But it won't always be. You're going to find um, that you know this is actually one of our objectives for the class to be able to make a good user interface. Sometimes working with the graphics is the way you want to go. So anyhow, we'll do that a few times throughout class. All right, so I've showed you that. Um, so if I just want the code instead of the design, so just the design, just the code, I want both. Usually when I want both on a laptop, you need to hide other things so that the, these are big enough for you to see. OK, um, so that's my activity underscore main XML. I'll go here. I'll bring project back up. I want to show you where activity underscore main XML lives. It's under apps, it's under resources, it's under layout. Right there it is. Um, so you'll accidentally delete it from time to time. Oops, oh, it actually isn't deleted. It's just that that menu went away. And I could put it back in the same order if I want by dragging, you know, uh, it's probably something intuitive. You probably could have figured it out in your, your own, but I thought I'd tell you while I'm here. Um, so under app, under resources, under layout, that's where you're going to find activity underscore main dot XML. Uh, main activity dot KT, our Kotlin file. Um, this looks different than in the past. It just said Java in the past. Now it says Kotlin plus Java. Okay. Um, kind of like it because it was always just Kotlin for us. You know, and when I did this in the early teens, you know, it was just Java. Um, so it's okay that they made that change. They were going to have to do it eventually. So we're going to drill down in here, and then I've got these three options. Now, two of them are grayed out, and they are going to get addressed, I think, in video for Chapter 5 and Chapter 6, things I don't cover in class. Now, those videos I am not going to update. I had honor students make those for me in the past. Um, but these are just for like debugging testing, okay? So the one you want is the one that's not grayed out, and we'll drill down into that. And you can see we've got our main activity there. So if I accidentally kill it there, I can bring it back up over here. Um, all right, and I can unhighlight that. Um, did I run that with that commented out? Uh, I could have swore that I did. Okay, so uh, let's see, what else? Um, until we put other things in, that's all I got to show you there, right? Like these we're not using except for in the videos in chapter five and chapter six. Um, whenever we you know, bring in different artwork, it's going to be under drawable, whenever, oh, under values. Yeah, I'm going to show you values. Um, and let's see, under XML. Uh, nope, nothing there. Under values, we will probably use all of these throughout the course. The first thing we'll probably use is strings. Um, so this says test app two. Well, I'm going to go ahead and run this guy and see if we can figure out where test app two shows up. But it's the only string that we have in there. Now we are going to create our own string resources pretty early on, and um, you know it's kind of something you do when you're starting an app. Uh, and then as you create some brand new thing, like you want to put in a text field, oh, I need a string resource for that. But if we end up texting. Uh, running, uh, developing an app that takes like a month, say, um, we probably come to this folder once or twice and usually in the first day or two or week. Uh, and then we kind of forget about it. Um, but it's a pretty simple thing. It's just where we're keeping our string resources. And we'll talk about why we do that in class. But today, it's all about the tour. All right, so um, there, yeah, OK. App test app name test app two. Let's see if we find it. No, 
we don't see it anywhere, okay? Um, and that is not always been the case um, back in, say, dolphin and eel. Test app two would actually show up right up there at the top, okay, right there, where I would have a toolbar. Um, I don't know when that dropped off, somewhere between eel and giraffe, not that many letters, uh, but it's now something that we need to remember to put back in. And those are videos that I will probably announce or update and certainly address in class, uh, but it's not the way it's, it's not the way you see things whenever they cover it in the textbook. So things change, they change very fast. All right, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, so when I clicked on that particular folder, it shows up, it's now in the tab, and I can move around between those tabs. If I bring up colors, something that is pretty nice about the colors is I get these previews. So if I want to create a brand new color, that should be pretty easy. And let's call it, well, I could play around, right? Uh, let's call this 000, except for the first few. And what's it show up as? Oh, just black. All right, let's make this 00 and make this FF. It doesn't matter if you're uppercase or lowercase here. Um, doesn't like the uppercase, am I wrong? Did I put too many letters? Let me count. All right, I'll try the uppercase. Oh, it doesn't like that they are the same name. Uh, so name is, I'll say, red. Um, funny, it didn't yell at me or didn't notice that problem whenever it was FF00, but when I change it to 00FF, uh, all right, doesn't like that. FFFF. -F -F. All right, red. Um, so we'll talk about what those different letters mean, uh, but we got two letters for our alpha layer, we got two letters for red, two letters for green, two letters for blue. Um, if I use a six letter variant, let's get rid of these two Fs, I believe it's gonna work. And there we go, we got red. So when I drop the first two, if I only have six, then it doesn't have a transparency layer in it. It's just got the red, the green, and the blue. All right, so here, those first two Fs are saying that it is completely opaque. Um, and then everything else says this is black. Zero out the red, zero out the green and blue. Okay, light every one of them up, red, green, and blue. Then it's gonna be white. Light up just the red to full capacity, FF, solid red. I want solid green. We can change just the last two Fs. I want a purple. Uh, I'm sorry, the green would be the middle. If I, um, you know, it's not my favorite color, purple, to be honest with you. If I want the green, then I can change the middle letters to F. So colors are kind of fun to play with. I love the fact that it has a preview over here. And I think it always has, so long as I've been playing around with uh, coding in here. Um, so if you want color and you don't know what the code is and it's not very obvious, there are tons of tools you can go online, search for a hexadecimal color, uh, pick a chooser, you get all kinds of apps out there, all kinds of ways to do it with a wheel or sliders. Uh, and then you just copy their hexadecimal code. And if you want an alpha layer, you just put the two numbers in front. Okay, um, so themes, uh, I'll get to themes a little bit later. I'll show it to you. Uh, but this is now the default theme, and this is where we get no app bar now, where we used to, because they changed our default theme uh, from when this book was created that we're gonna use. But I think I'm done there. All right, so I showed you under Kotlin Java, the only thing we have right now is here's where we keep our program, and under resources, uh, don't really wanna do anything there, don't know what I hit, uh, under resources, uh, drawable we'll use later, layout we're using now, that's where we have our file, our XML file. Um, and we're gonna use values, colors and strings and themes, we'll use them all. Okay, so I've showed you all that. Um, I'll show you the manifest real quick. Uh, bring up the manifest file. It is something that we touch from time to time. It's one of the first things that is going to get read as we run our application. Uh, there isn't anything that we're gonna have to change for a while, but I thought you should see where it's at, okay? Um, I'll tell you one thing is this is saying when we launch, we're gonna launch the main activity. Other things, um, I'm gonna save, I'll tell you later.
And let's see, so manifest, and under the Gradle, um, really I use the top two, and I've never used any of the others, and we probably won't use this top one for a while. You've seen the Gradle, okay. And under resource management, I went through these real quick. Uh, drawable, we'll use uh, color. Hey, it's in both project and resource management. We got that red we just made, layout, activity. So um, some of it seems a little bit redundant. Uh, we'll use that next time, I think, whenever we bring in an icon for our applications. Um, other things, let's see. Delete, delete, delete. All right, down here, when we run it, we have a, um, some tools that we're gonna use. We, can, we could run down here. And um, this is where we are gonna have like our, our console, right? So when it runs on occasion, it popped up and it said that it was running. In the future, uh, very near future, we'll be using it more. Uh, until then, we're gonna leave it alone. Uh, let's see, up here, we can run, uh, we can use our debugger, uh, let's see, another debugger, sync the project, device manager, okay, so we have device manager here, and we have it here, I suppose if you accidentally deleted it, you need a way to get to your device manager, and I showed you in another video, you want to add a new device, do it here, you want to delete a device, which happens sometimes, we could do it here. Um, and sometimes, by the way, and, uh, I've even had devices where the skin falls off. I mean, it sounds gross, but like it, it just stops behaving the way I want or it stops behaving at all. And that's why I delete it from time to time. All right, um, that may be it for our preview. I, I think so. Um, I'm sure I'll think of more to do in class, but I think that's enough for the people that couldn't make it to class. I know I've got at least one. Um, so we're gonna, we're going to definitely be making new videos outside of class, like I'm doing now, up through Robot. And after that, I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see if I can do it. I'll see if it's necessary. If it's necessary, I will. Um, and even if it's not necessary, I might if I have the time. All right. So anyhow, that's it. I will see you uh, for, like, what, day two of our new semester. Bye, guys.